hello, I'm going to show you how to obtain images of the abdominal aorta. To do this exam, we should use a curvilinear abdominal probe. This curvilinear abdominal probe has a curved face on it. This is how you know it's the abdominal probe. It's a low frequency probe and can image anything in the abdomen. As we place the probe on the abdomen, we can see several structures. When identifying the aorta, the first structure to find is the spine. The spine is hyperechoic with shadowing posterior and is deep on the screen. Once you identify the spine, you can look for the aorta and the IVC. Here we see the proximal aorta and the proximal IVC. As we slide down the abdomen, the aorta becomes more superficial due to the lordotic curve of the spine. Abdominal gas often obscures the aorta. However, with slow gentle pressure, the gas will move to the side and the aorta will become visible again. It can be difficult to identify all the branches of the aorta, particularly in large patients. As we scan from the proximal aorta towards the distal aorta, the first branch is the celiac trunk. It is often difficult to see. The second branch is the superior mesenteric artery, or SMA. This artery has bright walls and is often easy to see particularly since the splenic vein courses over the top of the SMA and the renal vein courses below. This helps us identify the SMA because it has bright walls and is surrounded by dark structures, which are the veins. As we go distally on the aorta, no more branches of the aorta are visible using ultrasound until we get to the bifurcation of the aorta into the iliac arteries. Here's an example of how to make your formal measurements of the aorta largely for documentation purposes. Again, you're going to start with the probe in a transverse plane in the epigastrum with the probe indicator pointing to the patient's right. You start off by identifying the anterior cortex or the vertebral body, and you will then notice a anechoic structure just to the patient's left of the midline. This is the aorta. Once you've identified this, you'll place your measurement. Here is the superior mesenteric artery. So this is our middle segment. Then last, we're going to go down to the bifurcation and then come back up another one to two centimeters. There's the bifurcation. So let's come back up and freeze the image and measure outer wall to outer wall. To obtain the long axis of the aorta, turn your probe north-south on the body. Here we see the aorta and long axis with the spine posterior. We can slide up and down the aorta and see the branches we saw in short axis. One of the most important views here is to find the celiac trunk and the SMA takeoff. Here we can look for lymphadenopathy and other pathology. When looking at the aorta, the IVC is easily seen just to the side of the aorta. The IVC actually pulsates more than the aorta. Here we see the IVC is somewhat teardrop shaped because it's a lower pressure vessel and so it is not completely circular. We can check the IVC in cross section as we did the aorta, but the best way to look at the IVC is in long axis. So as we turn long axis on the IVC, we can see the IVC here and we would like to check the IVC up near the right atrial junction. To do that, we must increase our depth, and we also want to see the hepatic veins. So we pan back and forth, side to side, to find the center line of the IVC. You know you're at the center line of the IVC when the walls of the IVC are very bright, as we see here. Then we look for the hepatic veins. You can see the hepatic veins coming into the screen here, and we look at the IVC to see it collapse and expand with inspiration and exhalation. 